All right. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. And thank you for being here on the last day of the conference. Uh, we're hoping we'll see you through the end of our session today. And thank you for coming to celebrate our 50th anniversary with us. Again, I want to thank our Cooperative Institute and our Glural staff, both past and present, uh, all our partners, and for all our special guests who are here to help us celebrate. So thank you very much. So now we're looking ahead. What are the next 50 years of science and service to society uh, for the Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory? We'll remain committed to protecting and securing our Great Lakes water and ecosystem resources for our current and future generations. And we'll continue our integrated physical, chemical, and biological research to address our most pressing environmental challenges. If you had an opportunity to join us yesterday for our 50th anniversary presentations, you heard about our numerous past accomplishments. Uh, you heard about establishing the laboratory's mission and focus. You heard about our traditional and emerging observing technologies, including satellite remote sensing and omics. And you heard about the evolution of the Great Lakes Coastal Forecast System that has underpinned and provided the capability for us to move on to cutting edge ecosystem forecasting and prediction. You've heard about our long-term temperature monitoring, uh, advancing our understanding and prediction of Great Lakes water level variability and ice cover, uh, the advances in our ecological and biophysical modeling with an emphasis on understanding Great Lakes food webs, and documenting decades of the Dreisenid mussel invasion and its impacts, which has had the result of us working very hard to keep future invasives, such as invasive carp, out of the Great Lakes. And of course, our harmful algal bloom research that has transitioned fundamental research to operational forecasts. But what does our future hold? We know we're seeing rising average temperatures, increasing length of our sea, uh, warm seasons, uh, total precipitation's been increasing, and even more concerning is the intensity of precipitation has been increasing, and we're seeing a marked decline in ice cover. But to address these challenges, we have new areas of research, including freshwater oil spill modeling, winter hydrology, Great Lakes acidification, climate, and ecosystems and fisheries initiative, uh, developing the next generation prediction system for Great Lakes water levels and lake management decisions, and coastal and inland flood inundation mapping. So for more details and insights on these topics, please attend today's 50th anniversary presentations. But I'll give you a quick overview now in those different areas. So as I mentioned, um, the Great Lakes Coastal Forecast System has set the stage for us to be able to predict oil spill response as well as ecosystem response. And beginning in 2018, with the passage of the Vessel Incidental Discharge Act, um, the Great Lakes Center of Expertise for Oil Spill Preparedness and Response was established under the auspices of the US Coast Guard. And then after considerable evaluation by the Coast Guard, that new center was placed at Glural and at Lake Superior State University uh, so that we could work together to address this research need. And we were able to uh, persuade um, our commerce lawyers to allow us to add Lake Superior State to our cooperative institute to enhance that relationship. So teaming with uh, NOAA's Office of Response and Restoration Glural and Sigler will support the US Coast Guard by evaluating the general NOAA Operational Modeling Environment, or NOME for short, uh, for the Great Lakes freshwater environment, and will identify gaps for tracking oil spills, such as freshwater conditions and ice effects, and we'll be developing strategies to address these gaps. We'll also be incorporating the high resolution Great Lakes Coastal Forecast System surface currents and their forecasts into the NOME framework to evaluate and improve oil spill trajectories and location tracking to support potential response, rescue, and cleanup. And we'll also be conducting research and potential impact of ice cover on oil spill trajectories, including identifying efficient tracking for oil under ice, ice breaking, and wave ice interactions. 
and will be conducting research and numerical modeling that will include investigating an oil spill occurring under ice conditions. And then speaking of ice, observing winter ecology is key to understanding our ecosystem conditions and changing uh, in the evolving climate. So ice properties, including ice cover and ice thickness, provide critical controls on the success of fish spawning in the shallow waters of the Great Lakes. So we intend to expand our research program in winter ecology. And here you can see we're developing new technology for under underwater observations during ice cover. So this will help us to measure uh, changes in winter hydrology during the presence of ice and be able to validate our coupled ecosystem models during this critical period of the season. So NOAA Gluro and a team of federal, university, industrial, and industry partners, including Saab, Teledyne, and Hibbard, are conducting test deployments of an autonomous underwater vehicle in Lake Michigan, with the ultimate goal of using it under lake ice during winter to collect ecological and water quality data. In December of 2022, we did the first test with the um, systems docking station and charging capabilities for the first time. So the successful field trial achieved several goals, including <clears throat> the autonomous system na uh, navigated through the Muskegon Channel and out into Lake Michigan, where it successfully collected ecological data and mapped the lake floor. And back in the channel, the autonomous underwater vehicle autonomously docked itself using a sonar dyne acoustic beacons to confirm its location. And then once it was docked, it transferred the data it collected and successfully recharged its battery from the Teledyne Energy Systems subsea supercharger hydrogen fuel cell. So as a truly groundbreaking outing, this field trial was the first time the Saab AUV has ever been charged underwater using a hydrogen fuel cell power source. And just like winter uh, hydrology, little is known about the potential for acidification in the Great Lakes or its impact on the biology of the system. So acidification in the freshwater systems is similar to that in the ocean and that the carbon dioxide concentration increases in the atmosphere. The aquatic systems can become a sink for that carbon dioxide, leading to a shift in inorganic carbonate chemistry. And while acidification has been shown in large lakes in Europe, little is known about the potential for acidification in the Great Lakes or its impact on the biology of the system, though it is predicted to occur at a rate similar to the oceans as a result of the anthropogenic carbon emissions. So at Gloro, we're increasing our monitoring effort of the dissolved inorganic carbonate system through deploying continuous sensors in Lakes Michigan Huron and Lake Erie. We're also incorporating discrete sample collection within these systems at a number of our established monitoring sites. We're working with partners at the Atlantic Oceanographic and Meteorolog Meteorological Laboratory and the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory, which are the two sibling laboratories to GLURL within NOAA, to establish new standards and techniques specific to freshwater systems. For experimental research, we're currently pursuing experiments looking at the impact of acidification on the growth, gene expression, and toxin production in several cyanobacterial HAB species from the Great Lakes. And this data will be incorporated into biogeochemical models within the region. And we're also working to maintain a long-term ecological research program that collects data on critical food web variables in the nearshore and offshore Lake Michigan for the development of new concepts, models, and forecasting tools to explore impacts of various stressors on the ecosystem. Uh, you might have heard Ed Rutherford yesterday, who's shown here in the photo, when he presented <clears throat> on Glural's contributions to the Great Lakes ecological models. And looking forward, in support of NOAA's Climate Ecosystem Fisheries Initiative, which I'll tell you a bit more in a second, NOAA GLURAL is developing a Great Lakes Earth System Model Framework that can accurately replicate past climate-induced variability in Great Lakes ecosystem function and fish production and project future variability in ecosystem and fisheries response 
to climate change over the time scales relevant to fisheries managers from seasonal to decadal. Recognizing that climate change is significantly impacting the nation's valuable marine and Great Lakes ecosystems and fisheries, NOAA has launched upon a new national initiative, as I mentioned earlier, called the Climate Ecosystems and Fisheries Initiative. And so NOAA will build an end-to-end -end operational modeling and decision support system needed to provide the information and capacity resource managers and stakeholders needed to reduce impacts and increase resilience in a changing climate. Plural was fortunate to receive funding under the Inflation Reduction Act to become a node for the Great Lakes in this new national system. And we'll be working on accurate projections of climate change effects on the Great Lakes ecosystems, watersheds, and fisheries for sustainable fisheries management. And we'll also be assessing potential trade-offs in future fisheries production such as, for example, reduction in cold water fisheries, but increases in warm water fisheries that may influence management and policy decisions. And fisheries managers and scientists also need to know the time scales over which climate change will affect ecosystem and fisheries. So this is a rare opportunity for NOAA Glural to develop a diverse modeling team and a framework to inform and support ecosystem and fisheries management in the Great Lakes. So GLURL will develop projections of past, present, and future aquatic ecosystem states, the food web, and fish responses to a range of lake and basin-wide climate change scenarios. And these efforts will benefit the fisheries technical and policy committees organized by the Great Lakes Fishery Commission, which is responsible for coordinating our binational fisheries management in the Great Lakes. And then underpinning all of this effort is advances in omics tools to understand ecosystem function. Omics uh, approaches are increasingly used to study aquatic ecosystems and harmful algal blooms. And we're using omics tools to explore Great Lakes harmful algal blooms, food web dynamics, and invasive species and in fisheries. DNA and RNA proteins and metabolites contain a wealth of information and expand monitoring capabilities and hold potential for informing the next generation of modeling, forecasting, and management practices. But storing the data, processing it, retrieving it, and having a search functionality requires a sophisticated database for effective discovery and use. Bioinformatics is a new and growing area of research for NOAA and its partners. So I hope you had the opportunity uh, to see Greg Dix and his co-author's presentation on Tuesday on advancing omics in the Great Lakes with the Great Lakes Atlas of Multi-Omics Research, or GLAMOR for short. And I have to say, Greg came up with the best acronym by far <laughs> in the, in the uh, constellation of Great Lakes acronyms. So the GLAMOR database enables discovery and exploration of environmental omics data from the Laurentian Great Lakes. And it's a product of the Geomicrobiology Lab at the University of Michigan and it's supported by Sigler through the NOAA Omics program. And then as certain as death and taxes, um, we will continue to see variability in Great Lakes water levels. So seasonal and interannual variability can have major impacts on infrastructure, property, navigation, hydropower, and recreational activities. And over the past two decades, we've seen some of the most dramatic changes in water levels from an extended period of low levels, including record low levels on the upper lakes during the 2000s and early 2010s, to a rapid multi-year rise culminating, culminating in record high water levels on all the Great Lakes from 2017 through 2020. And again, through bipartisan infrastructure funds, GLURL has been fortunate to receive funding to work to advance the modeling behind these seasonal forecasts by incorporating the latest atmospheric science, hydrology, and data science to improve predictability and extend predictions beyond six months to a year. We have a large stakeholder engagement component to this project to ensure that the forecast framework and the resulting decision support tools are successfully transitioned and provide information that's relevant to water managers their stakeholders and public users of the Great Lakes. And similarly, we've also received substantial funding from the bipartisan infrastructure law 
to continue to build upon our Great Lakes Coastal Forecast System. We'll be using uh, that funding to include the Great Lakes, uh, to expand our Great Lakes hydrodynamic models to include the floodplain. And we are currently, they only extend to the nominal shoreline and many ports, harbors, estuaries, and floodplains are not covered in the domain. Through coastal coupling, the linking of land hydrology and river hydraulic models across the coastal interface um, with the Great Lakes Coastal Forecast System is a new area of research. And lake to land coupling is novel and Glorals leading the way in developing an experimental approach to provide accurate total water prediction capabilities and real-time coastal flood inundation mapping. So in this project, we're starting with Lake Ontario, but we anticipate that the methods developed will be readily applied to the other Great Lakes and will become the next generation of the Great Lakes operational forecast system. So we're working very closely with the National Ocean Service from the start to ensure that our R&D work can be transitioned to operations during the project. And I would really like to emphasize that Glural in partnership with our Cooperative Institute for Great Lakes, is now using the NOAA service delivery framework in all of our work to ensure that we have the ultimate goal of improving service delivery. So this requires building trusted relationships, connected lessons about the use of information with user needs, reviewing and considering NOAA's capacity to respond, reviewing and prioritizing product and service development, responding to user needs and delivering products to users and evaluating user impact. So this is a new area where we're heavily investing in social science in order to ensure that we co-develop and engage our partners in our science. So our Sigler research engagement specialists are using the framework to ensure that research products are useful and usable by involving stakeholders and uh, rights holders in co-design to bridge the gap between scientists and end users to ensure knowledge and research outcomes translate to decision support and operations, and to conduct social science research on engagement, co-design, and other relevant topics. So throughout my talk, you've heard me mention our many partners. NOAA could not accomplish its mission without our innovative partners who are bringing cutting edge science and technology to bear. So whatever the future holds, novel partnerships will play a key role and monitoring the Great Lakes take a collective community, both government and non-government. And so next you'll hear about our innovative research and monitoring through the NOAA and Viking Expeditions Cooperative Research and Development Agreement. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Debbie. There is a minute or so for a question, if there are any questions. So I could ask a quick question. You know, we all put a lot of effort into, oh, is it? Great talk, Debbie. I was um, I'm wondering, thinking about other federal agencies and you know their visions for the next many decades and what's distinct about GLURL and where we fit into that. So we're doing very um, synergistic work with other agencies. So you, I thank you because you allowed me to draw attention to my final slide here. Um, we're working very hard under the auspices of the International Joint Commission through its Science Advisory Board to develop a multinational plan for Great Lakes science on a decadal or longer time scale. We envision this as a Great Lakes Restoration Initiative-like program. However, that program looks at restoring the Great Lakes from past harm and past damages. This new Great Lakes science plan will look forward to anticipate and prevent future environmental damages and allow us to help manage the system through a changing climate. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you for being with us to celebrate.